welcome back to the Radio Mechanic. Today we are finally going to get around to the video where I'm going to show you how to prep your RG8 style coax. This happens to be 9913F to install either PL259s or end connectors. Now these are the new style end connectors. If you're still struggling along with these old multi-piece connectors do yourself a favor find a supplier of one of these two-piece connectors these mount or assemble virtually the same as a PL259 they are just wonderful to work with versus the old style multi uh, the multi-part end as you can see this part of the barrel looks very much the same it's got the solder holes, the center conductor is fixed in a Teflon insulator, it's got a seal, oops, on the wrong piece here, it has a seal down inside there to make it watertight. These are just wonderful to work with. These on the other hand, I no longer use. I had a couple in the junk box and I pulled them out. These are just horrible. And there goes the phone. Hang on just a minute. Just some, some telemarketer, 1-800, I don't even pick those up. Okay, so we're going to put all these pieces back in the vial. And maybe we can find some old timer who just cannot stand to live without the multi-piece connectors. You have to have everything so precisely built with one of these. They're not even worth discussing. Let's just throw that over there on the side and be rid of it. And we will do the end connectors or excuse me, the PL259s, and the process is the same for the end connectors. So let's gather up some tools. Now, believe it or not, this is about all I need to assemble my coax. A good set of cable cutters. Now these are the type that are designed to fit around the cable and they shear cut. They make a nice clean cut without crushing the center conductor. This is just a little tool to strip the outer jacket off. You don't need that. You can do it with a razor knife. But this does it with a controlled depth and doesn't hurt the braid. And this, you'll see me use this to cut the braid and uh, pull off part of the insulation so we have access to the center conductor. Just about any type like this will work. Again, you could use a razor knife. I find this easier to work with. We're also going to need a decent soldering iron. I used to use this flat tip one to solder the braid and I'll show you what I mean by that in a couple of minutes. I now use my inductively heated solder pot. I still use this old beast to solder down into the hole but today just for giggles we're going to try doing it as well with one of these Weller beasts. Uh, this happens to be the 240-325 watt version. Uh, and this is one of those cases where bigger is usually better when you're trying to solder the, uh, the sleeve onto the braid. The reason being you want a lot of heat so you can get in and get out before you melt the jacket on the coax. Now you've all probably seen all of the amateur radio handbook things where they tell you to measure off this much material and take off that and then cut the center conductor to this and throw all that information away. Everything you need to measure this thing is right here. Your cable center conductor has to reach all the way to the end here. There's a ridge right here in the center between these two neural sections that's where the top of the insulator, oops, excuse me, that's where the top of this Teflon insulator is. It's right at that ridge. And if you don't believe me, you can take something and go down inside. There, I'm up against the insulation. You see it falls right in the center there. Uh, my big fat thumb's in the way. Falls right in the center of the ridge, right between the center of these two neural pieces. Your outer jacket, you want to run all the way to the bottom of the threads. That falls right in the center of this thread. There's an internal thread in here so you can thread it onto the uh, insulating jacket of your coax. That thread ends 
right there at the center of these threads. That's all the dimensions you need to know. What I'm going to do is even that up with the end of my connector. I'm going to mark where the center is of this thread. And I'm just going to make a little thumbnail mark. Then I'm just going to take my tool, make a couple of turns around here, and pull my jacket off. Now the next step in all the books, they tell you to trim back this uh, outer braid. What happens when you do that, you end up with little shards everywhere. It's almost impossible to get it even. There's just no good way to cut the stuff as is. What they don't tell you is to tin the braid first. Now again, I used to use that big flat tipped iron to do it, but today, we're going to use my little solder pot here and make the job much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and prep three or four of these. I have the other end of this cable and a couple more I'm going to make up. We'll tin it and we'll pick it up from there. Whoops, hit the camera again. Okay, I've prepared my four ends of the cable. And just a quick refresher or reminder of what I've done so far. I hope this is clear. I've cut the cable, or the jacket of the cable, back to about the center of this small thread where the shell uh, connects on. And my coax is long enough so that my center conductor will protrude through my center pin. It can be a little bit shorter. There's nothing hypercritical about this. If you make it a little long, you can trim it off before you put it back in. Don't worry about getting all these dimensions absolutely perfect. This is going to work out fine. So there's where my jacket's going to go. Now I want to tin my braid so that it doesn't spread open. I don't end up with little shards inside here when I cut it. It doesn't fold back when I try to put the connector on. The idea is we want the braid tinned, ready to solder, and set up so that it can't short the center conductor and it's not going to uh, fly out to the sides and get all ragged looking. Now. I used to use a flat soldering iron tip, very much like this screwdriver, and I used to just solder this by hand, and it's very time consuming. So I built this little inductive heater over here, and that's what I'm going to use today. I'm going to turn it on, it's going to get a little bit noisy. That's okay. I can live with it if you can. And it's coming on. I have applied a little bit of flux to the end of this uh, braid here. You can use either a rosin flux or the liquid flux, that's your choice. I have some old paste type flux that I know is non-corrosive and that's very important. You cannot use a corrosive acid type paste on this. And we're starting to melt. I'll move the camera in a little bit here. And it's just about fully molten. It is. And the thing's kicked off. Now that's about 183 degrees. I am going to boost the temperature up to about 190 so that it wets a little bit faster. I keep it at 183 so that it doesn't oxidize. You can hear the uh, heat control kicking in and out over there. But I'm going to hold it in manually and bring it up to about 190, 195. There's 195. I'm going to put this in. Wait for it to wet. It's wetted. I'm going to pull it out. And there we have a nicely tinned braid. It wasn't in there long enough to melt the center insulation. You can see a little ball of solder that's attached to the center conductor. That's fine. It's getting cut off anyway. And we have a braid that will not fray on us. We'll do the same thing with the other end. Very nicely wetted. Ready to rock and roll.
And number three. Nicely tinned. And where's the other end of my other cable? It's down here on the floor somewhere. There we go. Here's the last one. And we'll get this one. Finished. Now we can shut off that noisy little creature and move on to the next steps. Now that we have the braid tinned and it won't fray on us, I'm going to line up my rubber jacket once again with the center of that uh, small thread and I'm going to take note of where the center falls between these two rings here where this center falls right here that's going to be my next cut right in here so I'm going to I can't do this in front of the camera I'll knock the camera over so I'm going to cut it and I'll bring it right back so we've cut our braid and I'm just going to twist it off of the conductor Ugh, this insulation's tough. Maybe I'll cut a little bit more here. Getting weak in my old age. There we go. Now I've removed that part of the braid. And if I get my connector, you can see that the braid is going to end right in the middle of the two rings near the end of the coax, the two knurled rings, and the jacket is going to end right in the center of this uh, back thread right here. That's going to put the braid right down against the top of the insulator so you maintain a 50 ohm impedance. You can see, I hope, you can see how clean the end of that is. There's no frayed edges. There's nothing that's going to short circuit. There's nothing that's going to fray. I can slide this on. And at this point here, you can take a look, and, and this is a personal call. I usually like to bring it pretty close to the end, but if you like them recessed a little bit, you can always trim the end of the center conductor just a little bit. And then you're going to thread this on, and it threads on to the outer jacket. And as it threads on, you can probably, I hope, see the braid is coming down into the hole. And you turn it until it gets tight. It's bottomed out now. My uh, braid, my soldered, or my tinned braid has hit the insulator, and you can see the center conductor is right there at the end. In many cases, you'd want to go ahead and solder that right now, but for the young players, or the guys who don't have uh, real well-developed solder skills, there's one more trick I'm going to show you that will make soldering this to the braid a little bit easier. You don't want to overheat this. If you overheat this too much, you're going to melt the outer jacket. That's especially critical on this 9913F. If you get this stuff too hot, this will literally melt right off behind the connector and you'll have exposed braid. Then you've lost all your stress relief on the connector. So I'm going to take this back off and do one more step for the new players. And we'll move the camera and get set up. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin the surfaces around these holes. Now it's going to look a little bit messy when I'm done doing this but it's going to make it much much easier for somebody who doesn't do a lot of soldering to get in and get out without melting the jacket it's a whole lot easier to flow the solder between solder and the solder that's on the braid than it is to try to wet this surface with the solder without pre-tinning it get it hot enough to wet and then solder the braid it takes a little bit longer 
that heat ends up traveling down the shell and you can melt your coax. So if you prep half a dozen of these beforehand, and let's just set them aside to cool. All this is a little piece of wooden dowel. And I'm using my old beast here. And usually I use my pointed uh, soldering iron. But just for this demo, in case somebody doesn't have one of those, I'm going to use this guy. And I've soldered that. I'm just going to rock it around. Oops, too far. Tin that one. And yes, it's good and hot. I've been doing this a long time and the fingers can take the heat a little bit. Okay, I've tinned all four of the holes. Then I would just set that aside, let it cool. Do another one, set that aside, let it cool. For now, we'll just set it up here on the drill press and I'll get another one. Get it prepped. And this wooden dowel, by the way, doesn't go all the way into the insulation. It stops right there. There, It's not critical. It's just the way this one worked out. And it just gives me a way to hold the thing up in the air and get the surface tinned. And these tin up pretty easy because they're silver plated. I get these at the local ham store. They're not Amphenol. Uh, I'm guessing they're made in China because they're like two dollars and sixty cents a piece when you buy them in quantity but they take solder well they do have a good solid Teflon insulation and I've never had any problems with them they sell them right here at the local ham store and it's a three-letter store I'm sure you can figure out who it is they've been uh, in business a long time and they're all over the United States and again that might look a little messy but you're going to end up with a good joint when all is said and done. A couple more tips for the young players. Absolutely, positively make sure that these sleeves are on your coax before you solder the ends on your coax. Because once these are on, there is no way, no matter how much you wish and want, these are not going to go back on. Uh, I used to have the habit of taping them on after I immediately after I prepped the coax I would tape the ferrules on and make sure they're pointing the right way if you get them back ways around it doesn't work very well either it may seem obvious but I cannot tell you how many times I've seen people put these ends on and not have these on and uh, I can't say I'm immune from that a couple of times another thing if your center conductor, oh, and I just stepped on this one and made an ungodly mess of it. Ah, uh, it always happens on camera, doesn't it? If it ends up being a little bit too long like this one is, don't use a pair of diagonal cutters. Use cutters that have a shearing action, otherwise you'll just crush the end of the cable. If you use one with a shearing action, it will cut it cleanly. And you won't end up with a flat end that will not fit inside of the connector. Now this one I just stepped on, so I'm going to have to fix that off camera. That's my own stupidity. One other thing I neglected to mention. When you tin these up, you don't want solder going down into the holes because then you won't be able to thread this on over the braid. And it's just things I know... I didn't even think of it at the time to tell you because you'll never get this threaded on if the solder goes through. Now I've switched over to my old beast here and I'm going to start soldering these connections through the holes in the coax and I'll try to get it up here so the camera you can see it. I like this old beast because the tips worn to a point and I can stick it right down in the hole and run the solder right down to the braid, but it will work with the other iron. Got to make sure it flows. There's one. A 
It's a lot harder doing it on camera than it is just doing it. There's two. Now I'm going to let that cool. I'm going to do, I've got four of these to do, and rather than get this shell so hot that I take a chance of melting the braid or the uh, jacket, I'll just do the other end or another cable. We'll do two holes, two holes, two holes. Now this one isn't tinned. I did one without tinning just to show it can be done. That's taken. And it's going to be a little bit neater. If you trust your soldering skills, go ahead and do it without the tin. But if you're a little bit nervous that you're going to overheat something, and it's all going to be personal preference. I'm not going to tell you there's an exact right way and exact wrong way. But you can see those are coming out pretty neat. I hope it's showing up in the camera. And again, I'm going to let that cool. And I'll do another one. And this way there's far less chance of ending up with a melted, uh, a melted jacket and having to redo it. You can always use them in the house. Some place it's going to be stationary, but it's always nice to be able to do them without melting anything. This is a leftover connector that I had laying around. But it'll work for the jumper I'm making. There's another one. We'll set that aside to cool. And I think you see the process. I'm going to shut the camera down and do the rest of these offline. Alright, for the last part of this, I like to use a small iron. I find as my eyesight dims, I have a little more control with this guy. And I'm just going to put it in here. Do a little heat transfer, let the tip warm up. And when I see it starting to draw solder in, I'll just add solder. And I'll continue to do that a little bit at a time till I see it's not drawing it in anymore. It'll start to bubble up on the end. No, nope, still taking it in. This uh, 9913F, I think it's a 13 gauge stranded wire and it draws up a lot of solder. There it is. That's pretty much, nope, it still drew it in. There, okay. It started to smooth it out, so I know it's pretty much filled with solder now. I can stop. I've got a reliable joint. And that's all there is to it. We now have our braid soldered all the way around. We don't have any melted jacket. We have no shorts, I guarantee it. I'll have to clean the rosin off of this or the flux off of this, but uh, that's done. It's that simple, folks. Now, I know it seemed to take a long time here in the video, but once you get the swing of this, it's pretty easy. And remember, don't worry about measuring. Your jacket wants to go roughly to the center of these threads. Your braid wants to be to the center between these two rings because that crimp right there is where they lock in this insulator. And you can measure them if you don't believe me. Stick something down in there and measure it. You're going to find that ridge right there is just about the exact top of that insulator. So jacket, insulator, then trim your center conductor. Tin your braid before you trim 
the, the braid tin it so it doesn't fray and you won't have any short circuits. I haven't had a short circuit on a coaxial connector in 40 something years. I made a mess of these when I was 13 or 14 but as I did more and more and more of them and this is hard to do on camera. I see some of the solder ran up here a little bit on the threads but it doesn't hurt anything. The, the shell still spins on there. I tried it. It's always harder on camera. Hope you uh, found something useful here. Please subscribe or I'll send my dog over to bite you. Take care. Bye. One, la one last quick thing. This is the one that I did not tin. And you can see they come out nice and clean. Um, my preference is not to tin them because I've been doing this for a long time. And the only reason I included that in the video is somebody's finding it hard to get enough heat quickly enough to make the solder take to the shell and to the braid by tinning the shell. It somewhat reduces that time and the temperature needed. But if you've got a good hot pointy iron like that old beast that I have, you can just solder them directly in and the solder will wick right down to the braid and it will take right to the edge of the shell here. That's it. See ya.